Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to provide a quick start tutorial for using Gmail in 2014. I'm going to go over all of the primary features of Gmail. I'm going to be a little quick, this is a quick start tutorial. If you're interested in a little more in-depth instruction and some advanced tutorials that go a little bit slower, I actually produced a 12-part video series on using Gmail last year in 2013 and the user interface really hasn't changed that much. I'll post a link to that playlist in the description of this video here on YouTube. But let's go ahead and let's get started with the quick start guide to using Gmail in 2014. When you first log into your Gmail account, this is what it's going to look like. And you obviously have to have a Gmail account to do that. If you don't have one yet, you can just go to gmail.com and create a new account. Now one of the things I want to mention first is I'm going to go over some of the navigation here, but I want to show you that the new version of Gmail actually groups your emails into some different categories. So you can see I have three different tabs up here at the top, primary, social, and promotions. So they try and send all of your social network emails to this social box here. They try and send all of your deals and promotions to this box. And then you have your primary inbox. Now feel free to try this out and use this version of the Gmail inbox. However, I'm going to quickly show you how you can change it to the normal version because I think most of you who are just starting out with Gmail would like to see something that you're a little more familiar with and make sure that you don't miss emails. So to go back to the normal inbox where you have all of your emails in one place, all you have to do is go over here to the right side and click on the gear icon. This is the Gmail settings. You're going to click on settings. And then in the window that pops up, you're going to click on the inbox tab. And where it says inbox type, go ahead and just change that. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, inbox type you can leave as default, <clears throat> but for categories you can uncheck social, uncheck promotions. Go ahead and go to the bottom and hit save changes. You'll notice now that I do that, I have all of my emails in one place here in my Gmail inbox. So let's now go ahead and talk about some of the navigation over here on the left side of Gmail. Obviously the big red button at the top left is the compose button where you can compose new emails and in a few minutes I'm going to go a little bit in depth in composing emails but just remember that that's where it is for right now. Your inbox is your primary location. You'll notice that it's highlighted in red because that's where we currently are. This starred section is for emails that you star. So if I click on that I don't have anything in there right now. However if I go back to my inbox and I just hit the little star symbol next to one of these emails and then I click on starred you'll see that the email is in there. So that's a quick way to mark emails if you have to get back to them real quick or if you want to do something with them you know within the next day or two the important feature. Now, what Gmail does is as you receive emails, if you have say 15 emails in your inbox and instead of opening the last one you received, you open one from your boss, Gmail is going to over time learn which emails you think are important. And they're going to mark them as important, which is this little icon right here, automatically when they come in your inbox. If you want to just see your important emails, you can click on the important section and you'll see that you have some in there, or you might not. Uh, but that's kind of a way to kind of get rid of the clutter and just navigate to those emails that are going to be most important to you. Sent mail is obviously where messages that you send will go. Drafts are messages that have started to be composed but haven't been sent yet. So actually when you start composing a message in Gmail, it has an autosave feature and that email will automatically be saved. Even if you lose power and your computer shuts down, you can log back into, e into Gmail when the power comes back on, go into your drafts folder and it should pretty much be where you left off in that email. So that's a really important feature. The circles link, I'm not going to go into depth about that in this tutorial, but that basically comes from Google+. You can add people, you can follow people on Google+, you add them to your circles, and then you could see emails specifically from those people in here. But I'm not going to worry about that too much right now. One thing I do want to show you is if you click on this more drop down here at the bottom, we have a few more locations in our Gmail account, and a couple of these locations are really important to some people. So what we can do is for the trash, we can actually click and we can drag it up to this main section here, so we're not going to always have to click on more to see the trash. We can also do that with spam if you want and all mail. Now I'm going to talk about the all mail feature here in a few minutes but first of all let's talk about composing emails here in Gmail. To compose a new email all you have to do is click on the big red compose button at the top left and you'll notice that this little pop-up box appears we can go ahead and hit the X out of Gmail's tutorial since I'm giving you my own tutorial here. And this is where you can compose a message. Now I've got some feedback from a number of users that don't like this small little compose window. The reason that it is like this is so that while you're composing a message, you can click on emails and read emails if you need to use some information within your email, yet your composing message window is still here. But for those of you who don't like this little small box, all you have to do is click on this little two-sided arrow up here at the top right of the box and it will go into a full window so that you can compose your email a little easier. Now, 
Uh, when you go to compose an email in Gmail, it's pretty straightforward. You have the to field, the subject field, and then the body of your email. So if you just enter the web address that you want to send an email to in the to field, you'll notice that this automatically popped up. When you send an email to somebody, it's going to remember that email address. So when you go to send them another email, you don't have to type out the whole email address. Google will auto-populate that in there for you to make it a little bit easier. So I do want to send an email to webmaster at I could go ahead and put a subject in here, just say this is a test. Now if you want to do carbon copy or blind carbon copy, you can click up here in the to field and you'll notice that you have two buttons over here to the right. Carbon copy basically sends a copy to let's say John Doe at gmail.com. Anson Alexander will be the primary recipient. John Doe will get a copy. Anson will also see that John Doe got a copy. If we added the BCC field, which stands for blind carbon copy, and we put John Doe's email in that field and deleted it out of the carbon copy field, both of these people would receive a copy, but Anson would not see that John Doe got a copy. So that's kind of a sneaky way to copy somebody on email without the primary recipient knowing that that person's being copied. Obviously down here is the body of the email. You can just type a test message in here. If you want to do any formatting, you can click on this little A down here at the bottom and it brings up this formatting bar. So I could highlight my text, I could make it bold, I could change the font, I could create margins, I can do numbered lists, bulleted lists, a whole bunch of different formatting options here in Gmail. If I wanted to attach an attachment to this email, I can click on the paper clip icon, just click right on it, and it will bring up my finder window here on Mac, or if you were on a PC, it would bring up your my computer window where you could find a file. So I actually don't know, I've got a screenshot, I'm not even sure what this screenshot is, but I could just select this screenshot, click open, and it's going to automatically add it to the email. Alternatively, you can drag and drop here in Gmail. So if my window was a little smaller here and I had a file on my desktop, I could drag it right down here and it would add it to the email. So that's a little bit easier for those of you who like to drag and drop. Notice also that when you hover over this attach files section, you have some options in here. You can insert a file from Google Drive. If you use that, you might want to check out my tutorials on Google Drive. I'll also post a link to those in the description of this video here on YouTube. You can send and request money with the new Google Wallet feature. I'm not going to get into that in this video. You could add a photo and that would actually add it into the body of your message. You can also drag photos right into Gmail so that they're in the body of the message as well and then you can insert links or smiley faces. So you have a number of different options there. If in the middle of composing an email you decide you don't like it, you can just hit the trash can button down here at the bottom and it will delete it. But notice that right now it's already saved. I mentioned earlier that drafts automatically save. If I were to just close out of this window and exit Chrome and go back into my Gmail account, I would already have this message saved. In fact, let's go ahead and I'm gonna do that before we close out of this here. Um, if I wanted to send it, I could just hit the send button. But I'm not going to do that because I want to show you that the draft does save. So I'm just going to X out of it. I didn't save it. And if I go to my drafts folder, you'll notice there's a little one next to it. Here's my draft. I could click to open it up. And here's everything that I had in my email, including the attachment that we added. So that is how you can send emails here in Gmail. On the topic of sending emails, I want to show you quickly how to add a signature to your Gmail account because that's going to be one of the first things that you're going to want to do. So within Gmail, you're going to go to the top right corner, click on the gear icon, go to settings, and then in your settings window in the general tab, if you scroll down here a little bit, you'll notice that there is a place for a signature. So I could just put whatever I want as my signature in here. And then I can go ahead and I can save my changes at the bottom. Now when I go and click Compose, you'll notice that my Gmail signature is automatically added to the email. So you definitely want to add those in there as well. Now let's talk about reading emails here real quick. So here, I'm in my, here I am in my inbox, and you'll notice that a number of these messages are currently bold, while this one at the top isn't. The bold emails are emails that I haven't read yet. So if I click to open up this email and I go back, you'll see it's no longer bold. So that's how you can tell which emails you've read and which ones you haven't. Now if you click on an email to open it up, you'll notice that uh, you can see everything in the email here, but to respond to an email or forward it, it's all down here at the bottom. So I could just hit reply, you'll notice a new box pops up at the bottom. This little three dot thing here means that my signature is in there, but it's just not showing it because it doesn't think it's necessary. But if I want to click that, I'll be able to see there's the, uh, the copied message, but at the bottom here's my signature as well. 
Some people like the signature to go up top here, and uh, you can do that in Gmail. You just have to enable some of the Gmail labs, which I'll mention very briefly at the end of this tutorial here. But uh, I've clicked reply. Now I could go ahead and just type, here is my response. And I could send it at the bottom here. I could obviously add any attachments. We already went over that. If I wanted to add more people, I could go ahead and I could go to the carbon copy field and I could copy John Doe. So you can copy uh, a message right from a reply as well. And then I could go ahead and hit send to send this email. I'm just going to delete it for now. Now, when you're reading emails in Gmail, there are also a number of different options up here at the top right on the drop down menu. This is where you could print the email, um, you could report it as spam from here, anything like that. Um, a lot of these options are also available up here at the top. So we're going to go over these options here uh, in a second, uh, but I'm just going to go back to my inbox first. Now, you can do bulk actions here in Gmail. So from within my inbox, let's say I have three emails that I want to delete. I could just hit the check boxes next to however many emails I want to delete. And then up here at the top, where all these options are, I have the trash can symbol, which will delete an email. I also have the spam symbol, which will report it as spam. And then I have this archive symbol. And this is kind of an interesting feature of Gmail. What archiving does is it takes an email out of your inbox, but leaves it in your Gmail account. So if I hit archive, you'll notice that those three messages go away. And anytime I'm in my inbox, I'm not going to see them. But they're still in my account. And there's a couple of ways I could find them. First of all, I could go to the all mail folder. And you'll see that those are in there. The all mail folder contains every single email that you have in your Gmail account. So that's why I told you earlier in the video that I would talk about the all mail aspect of Gmail a little bit later. So that's really what it does. It shows all of your messages. So if you're archiving messages, taking them out of your inbox, then you can go to the all mail folder to find them. Now an easier way to find things in Gmail is actually, I'm going to hide this real quick, is actually to use this search feature up here at the top. Gmail has a very, very powerful search. Go figure. It's made by Google who made Google search. So I don't really, I'm going to show you how to use folders and labels here in Gmail in a few minutes, but I don't use them too much because I just search for everything. Let's see what kind of emails I have down here at the bottom. I have this one from Jorge. I think he was a viewer and he emailed my test account here and I, I never saw it, but I only have one email from Jorge. But let's say I don't know where that email is. I'm in my inbox. I already archived it. I don't know where Jorge's email is. What I can do is I can go up here to the top and I can just start typing his name and click search. And you'll notice there is Jorge's email. I could have also typed anything within the body of this email. So he talks about synchronization. So if I go back to my inbox and I just type sync and I search for it, boom, there's Jorge's email. So search is super powerful here in Gmail. Make sure that you make as much use of it as possible. Now let's talk about adding emails to folders here in Gmail. So uh, right now I don't have any folders in Gmail. But what I can do is I can, let's say I want to add this Facebook email to a folder to just save it for later. So I can hit the email checkbox to the left, or I could actually click the email to go into it. And then I can go up here to the folder icon, and I can move it to an already existing folder. These are the default folders that Gmail automatically creates for you. Or I can just click Create New. And I can just call this Saved. I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. Now when I do that, over here on the left, you'll notice that the Saved folder now appears. So I can take any emails, and you'll notice that there's a little chat window down here at the bottom. I'm not going to go over that in this tutorial, but we can now uh, hover over the top of it here so our, our cursor changes. And we can drag that down to the bottom so we can see all of our folders here on the left. Now to add emails to folders, there are a number of ways to do it. I can drag emails. So I could simply, from here in my inbox, I could just click, and I could drag this over to the saved section. At the same time, I could click the check boxes of multiple emails, go up to the folder icon, and click on Saved. It'll move them out of my inbox and into Saved. If I click on Saved, you'll notice here the email, all the emails that I've already saved. So again, real quick, to create a folder here in Gmail, it's easiest to do it from, uh, well, you can do it a couple ways. One, you can click on the More drop-down here at the bottom and click Create New Label. And I could just call this Test Folder. And then I could hit Create. You'll notice it appears next to Saved. Or I could be within an email, how I showed you the first way, go up here to the Move To, and I could create a new folder, just how we did before, and I could call this, I'll just call it New Folder. And again, you can drag emails right in, just click and drag it right into Test Folder, 
now I've got one email and test folder. Notice that these emails I moved, some of them are unread, and it tells me next to the folder how many unread emails are in that actual folder. So there's five emails in the saved folder, but it has the number four next to it telling me that there's four unread emails. The same with the inbox. My inbox says that there's 54 unread emails. So that's what that number means just to the right of these labels over here on the left side of your Gmail account. One other thing I want to mention before I finish the video is uh, contacts here in Gmail. I'm not going to go contacts in depth in this video. Again, I have a video solely dedicated to contacts in my 2013 video series on using Gmail, which again is in the description of this video here on YouTube. But to access your contacts, you can go up here to the top left where it says Gmail, click on the drop down, and click on contacts. And it's going to take you to your contact window. You could go up here and click on the little person silhouette to add a new contact. You can just type their name. I could say John Doe and click add. But again, I'm not going to go into detail on that in this tutorial, but that's how you can get to it. Take a look at my other tutorial, play with it on your own, and you'll be able to understand it a little bit better. The last thing I want to talk about in this video, and I apologize for the speed, like I mentioned at the beginning, that this video is a quick start guide for people who are looking to dive right into Gmail. Remember that you can always pause this video, you can rewind it, you can watch it again, or you could go and take a look at my detailed video series on using Gmail. But the last feature I want to mention is the labs feature because I did touch briefly upon that earlier. And what labs are, and I'm going to go back to my Gmail section here before I go over this, what labs are is they're add-ons for Gmail that you can add to enhance your Gmail account. So to access labs, you go over here to the right gear icon, click on settings, and then the very last, or it used to be the last tab, now it's not, there's a tab up here towards the right that's called labs. When you click on that, there's a whole bunch of really cool add-ons for Gmail. Like this one's a great one, canned responses. It allows you to compose a response and save that for later so that if you're sending the same email to multiple people, you don't have to retype it each time. You don't have to copy and paste. You can just use canned responses. And I actually have a video solely dedicated to suggested labs here in Gmail. So I'll also post a link to that video here on YouTube as well. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technology tips and tutorials. If you wanted to hear something else about Gmail that you didn't see in this tutorial and you didn't see in my 2013 video series on using Gmail, let me know in the comments section and I'll try and get a video up for you. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.